Welcome to Conestoga Minds. My name is Ryan Antua. I am many things, of which includes a designer, photographer, writer, founder and creative director of Form Studio, where we work with impact brands to build identities for them, and a professor here at Conestoga of brand strategy. But among that, I'm a person. I'm here in the now existing, speaking to you, who's perhaps listening and watching from a classroom, from a bus, from home, from being out on a run, wherever you may be. It means I'm existing in the here and now, and that you're existing too. Now, I've been a designer for over 10 years, working with brands on their creative identities, crafting logos and marks and images that help them display who they are to help other people. But what I've learned over time is that the logos and the identity elements that relate to brands also relate to people. Who we are is a sum of our actions, our words, our images, and the marks that we leave behind when we're in the room and when we're not. When people speak about us, how do they speak about us? When we speak about ourselves, how do we communicate about ourselves? What is the fashion that we wear? What are the books that we read? What are the images associated with us? Now, from logos to words to spirituality to all the actions that we take, we'll be going through a deep dive on how an image declares our existence in this talk. What does it mean to truly exist? Does it mean that people see you? Does it mean that people perceive you? Does it mean that you've left some sort of mark here on the world? Be that a logo mark, be that an impact. For me, it means that you're ultimately seen, heard, felt, and experienced by others. So whether you're in the room or out the room, whether you create something that lasts far beyond you, or it's just experience in the moment, be it a concert, a festival, something interactive, to be seen, to be heard, and to be ultimately felt in some way, shape, or capacity means you exist. And that could be personally or as a brand or a company. Now, typically with Form, my creative agency, we work with brands and companies in the impact space, and we create identities for them. So logo marks, full branding kits, and systems that allow them to communicate with their audiences. But if you really think about it, people themselves are brands. If you look at Steve Jobs, Travis Scott, Meryl Streep, a wide variety of people from actresses, actors, musicians, artists. We're all brands in a sense, right? Whether we communicate it and understand it or not, we all have a sense of identity about us. And that to me represents what it means to exist. So in terms of being experienced or perceived, that can happen in a number of different environments. That can happen digitally as we do with Instagram and TikTok and WhatsApp and WeChat, all the messages that we send to each other, sometimes memes, on a daily basis. So many of us are focused on what we're tweeting, what we're sharing, the things we're putting out, content, if you will, to fill the void of attention that we all seek. And to me, it's important to understand what power words have, what power images have, and what power logo marks have as far as our existence. Now, there's so many other elements to it, but being a creative director and strategist, I chose to focus on this three. But I encourage you, during this talk, after this talk, to think deeply about what it means for your existence to be here in the now. Who are you affecting? What impact do you want to make? Do you simply want to be and be present, or are there interactions you'd like to have? The words, the logo marks, and the images that we'll focus on here will reflect what it means to be experienced and perceived in whichever way you want as a person or a brand. So this is you. Well, it's not you, it's actually me. But take a sense of who you are in terms of the images and the pictures that represent you. Some of them might be portraits that people have taken of you. iPhone, Nikon DSLR, my favorite camera ever. Some of them might be family photos taken on film. Some of them might be drawings you've done. Some of them might be books that you've published or produced. What images do people associate with you and your existence? Are there marks, are there brands that people associate with you? Is there fashion that people associate with you? Are there memories or places even that people associate with you? I have a massive love for Japanese culture and philosophy, and also stoicism, so people associate that with me. And sometimes wearing tie clips and ties that are a little bit too long and a little bit too tight, but that's fine. Who you are can be summed up through a network and nebulous of images and marks. Now, I think quite visually, but sometimes those can be words as well. So when people think about you, Removing the images, removing the logo marks and the photos, 
How do people identify with you? Do they see you as joyful? Do they see you as somber? Do they see you as calculated? Do they see you as fashionable? How do people see you and perceive you? But also, how do you perceive yourself? Now again, whether you're a brand, you have a company, or just as an individual, how are you seen both through your own lens and the lens of others? So for me, you can draw a Venn diagram of who you tell others that you are verbally through the images that you take, through everything you put out on social media or in general, how you dress, and how you communicate to others. So there's a sense of who you tell others who you are, but there's also how others see you, right? Do they see you as confident? Do they see you as shy? Do they see you as extroverted, ambiverted, introverted? How do people perceive you based on what you're saying and based on the biases that they have? And how do you see yourself? Is it the same as how other people see you and who you tell others you are? Is it different? Do you see yourself in a completely different light than other people perceive you? And somewhere in the middle is who you actually are. And again, for some of us, it's the exact same as what we put out, but for some of us as well, who we actually are versus who we tell others that we are can have a gap because there's who we would like to be, right? And again, both as brands and both as people, who are you now versus where do you want to be? And what choices would you have to make in terms of the images that you're associated with, the logo marks you put out, the branding that you do, and the ideas that you communicate would get you to that place? Is there a gap? And if there isn't, fantastic. And if there is, how would you drive towards that? Who would you have to become and what would you have to say or do to get you to that place? People don't really think of brands as companies anymore. They think of them as people, which is why this talk about existence applies to both companies and ideas, but also individual humans, because people see brands as personalities. And images convey ideas of existence, our mottos, our flags, our hills, and what we truly stand for. So in a big way, this talk is meant to ask you, who are you really? What do you stand for? What do you want to stand for in the future? Again, both as a person or a brand. When it comes to your idea, your company, or even your personal brand, what are you showing to everyone around you? And not just visually, but through the words and the messages that you convey, through the associations that you have. A good example of this is typically people will say, you are the sum of the five closest friends you have around you. Why is that? Typically who we associate ourselves with reveals things about ourselves in terms of the company that we want to keep, the values and morals that we have, and ultimately what we're showing the world. I mean, from brands to people, status is something to be considered. People want to be felt, seen, liked, and heard. And what we do in order to have those things can reveal a lot about the status that we'd like to achieve and who we'd want to be in this world, right? The same thing goes for brands. So as far as how images translate to existence, we'll go through three things. And again, there's many other elements to existence as far as spirituality and other elements. But from a visual standpoint, we'll go through the power of logo marks, the power of portraits, and the power of words. And these can be considered red lights, green lights, and sometimes yellow lights as well. So we'll start with logos. Logos are points of identification. They're the symbols that customers or people use to associate you with an identity or a brand or a service or product. So it's really why you exist in the first place. Now, some of my favorite designers are pitched ideas from companies or given loose formed brands and have to amalgamate it into a logo, right? Or amalgamate it into identity. And they start with a logo mark, right? Perfect example, which we'll dive into later, is Citibank. But there's also Starbucks, there's Tim Hortons, there's Amazon. All of the brands that we can think about, we can just see the logo and typically have a sense of who we're viewing, right? Sometimes it's even color palettes or typography, or even images or illustrations. If we see the right one, we can associate them with the right brand. Logos are often a place where we start, as far as branding is concerned. So the key point here is that logos tell stories without words. Oftentimes when it comes to people or individuals, our fashion sense, how we speak, how we carry ourselves and how we communicate, tells stories about who we are before we even say anything, right? This goes back to the ancient days of hieroglyphics. 
carving sketches and words on walls to convey or communicate stories of who we are and show that we were here in the first place. It's a visual declaration of what we stand for and what we want to stand for and what we want to leave behind long after we're gone. So existence is in the here and now and in the present, but also a sense of what we'd want to leave behind for others to see and how we'd want to be perceived after the fact, which is why logo marks are such a beautiful thing, all the way from hieroglyphics to the logos that we see in digital ads and social media, right? They are a declaration that says, I am here, I was here, and I will be lo here long after I'm not. So a logo is a symbol or other design adopted by an organization to reveal a sense of its morals and values and the identity of a brand that we're talking about. By way of ancient Greek philosophy, logos refers to the divine reason implicit in the cosmos, ordering it and giving it form and meaning. So in a sense, to tie all this together, logo marks or marks of our existence give ourselves form and meaning. A rough idea that exists in our head as a brand or even just as an idea comes to life when we associate an image or logo mark with it. One of the most famous, of course, being the Nike logo. Now, the Nike logo was created, I believe, in 1984 by Carolyn Davidson, a young college student at the time. And it's quite simple, but recognizable anywhere in the world, essentially by anybody of any culture, right? The swoosh represents speed. It represents action and efficiency. You'll typically see this with any sports-oriented logo. It's typically slanted or has action going towards the top right of the logo mark or a page because it implies speed, it implies action, and that's even implied through the tagline of Nike, which is, just do it. So any collaboration they have, any product they work on, that check mark, that tagline, communicates exactly who they are. Now, of course, this is a massive brand that's developed over time, but I reflect this back to you watching this. What is your mark? What do people say about you when you're not in the room? Based on how you communicate, based on how you act, and who you associate with. Do you have a mark of your existence? Do you have a tagline or three words that people would sum you up in if they were to talk about you in the room or not in the room? Being just do it for Nike, and maybe another phrase for yourself. So if we look at any of these logo marks, 90% of people can pick out exactly what they are, even though there are no words associated with them because of all the messaging and all the images that we've seen associated with these brands. The top left being Apple, the bottom left being Mercedes, Shell, Nike, Penguin Publishing, Facebook, Target, Twitter, the old Instagram logo, and the World Wildlife Foundation logo as the panda in the top right, which is a beautiful use of negative space. Now, all these logo marks imply different things. Mercedes being incredibly well-balanced, having a subtle gradient and sort of reflective nature to it, luxury. Shell, created by, I believe, Geismar, his firm. Quite bold, beautiful contrast of colors, sharpness, efficiency, and clarity, right? Apple, one of the most famous logo marks over time, which has evolved quite a bit since the early 80s. Quite simple, quite refined, much like their products. Penguin Publishing, Facebook, all these logo marks say things and tell stories about who they are as companies before there's any words associated with it. So a logo mark can be quite powerful just on its own. One of my favorite stories about logo marks of all time involves one of my favorite designers of all time, Paula Shear. Now, you probably recognize this as the Citibank logo, which is a very popular bank in the States. This is originally how the Citibank logo began. Paula was in a meeting with leadership of Citibank and sketched this out on a napkin. It's been recreated here, very roughly, and looked at the leadership team and said, I got it. So a logo mark that was designed within a few minutes at a leadership meeting, simply by sketching it out, cost $1.5 million. Now I know what you're thinking. I need a new job. I understand. I mean, getting to sketch a logo mark and pay 1.5 million for it is fantastic. But what people don't see and what people don't consider oftentimes in this story is that that price means nothing in comparison to how the Citibank logo has been used. 
just creating that logo mark and creating that idea has led to an identity that they've used for decades as a company and still use to this day. And another thing is that in terms of making a logo mark or designing something, even though it might have been sketched out on a napkin, Paula had years and years and years of experience leading up until that point to create something that refined and that simple and that clear, that truly represented a brand. So from a personal standpoint, your mark, your existence, the logos that you leave behind, the ethos that you communicate with, and who you are, takes time to develop. So if there is a gap in terms of who you communicate who you are to others versus where you want to be, you'll slowly whittle it away over time and get to the million dollar mark, if you will. Be that as a brand or be that as a person. So from hieroglyphics to the modern world, there's marks of our existence. There's senses of our being that exist without words. So again, for you as a brand or an individual, what does that look like for you? Versus what do others think it looks like for you as well? What is your mark? What is your existence? So be it Spotify, Adidas, the Red Cross, Xbox, other companies on this, when you see these marks, what do you associate with these brands versus who are they actually? The same thing goes for you. What do people associate with you versus who are you actually? And how could you sum it up in a mark? Now you don't have to be a graphic designer to do this, but I encourage you to think. If your friends and family and people around you could sum you up in a visual format, what would it look like? Would it be a sharp geometric logo? Would it be a badge? Would it be something that had a bit of rougher type or textures or grit to it? Would it be shapeless or formless? Would it be a black and white image? Would it be a sound? Would it be a film? What would it be? What are the things that people tie you to? What are the images that are associated with your existence? So Apple, of course, being the most recognizable by so many people. But what do the small, subtle hints about logos say? What does the bite mark say about Apple's brand? That they think differently? That there's subtle nuance to be aware of when you think of their company? Apple's logo has gone through quite a bit of revelation over time and revision, all the way from 1976 to, well, not quite 2042, but 2014 and where we are presently. Brands and logos evolve over time. The same logic applies to us. So the mark that we leave now may be quite different than the mark that we leave 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now. And how we're perceived in the now and how we act in the now can be so much different than how we do. The Jack Nicholson's, the actors, the actresses, the musicians that we love, everyone seems to grow and go through rebrands over time. And whether you consider growth or rebranding the same thing, the same thing applies to logo marks, the same thing applies to brands, and the same thing applies to people and even you watching this. And logo marks and marks of our existence can be quite simple. I mean, the most one in terms of simplicity being MasterCard. Simply two circles, both red and yellow, to form orange in the middle, associated with each other. Again, you don't have to be a designer to leave some sort of mark or to associate some sort of mark with your existence as a person, as a brand. MasterCard is a perfect example of that. And in the marks that you have, this being one of the more famous ones, what are the subtleties that are revealed? Did you know that in the FedEx logo, a very, if not the most popular transporting packaging company in the world, there is hidden meaning in the mark itself. So in the images that you put out, in the things that you say, in who you are, is there subtext? Is there additional meaning? And how do you display it? So to put this quite simply, what is your mark as a person, as a brand? And how does it translate and convey ideas about yourself over time? Now as a sidebar, one of my favorite marks is the N64 logo in the bottom right. Why? Because I grew up playing and loving Zelda and all the games you can associate with it. But a brilliant hidden meaning about the N64 logo is the N has 64 faces to it, built in all of the sections and vertices of that mark itself. A nice, beautiful hint to N64. The rest of these logos have similar stories. There's hidden meanings to them and so much more that's conveyed 
beyond just words. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about photography. For all of us, whether you are a professional photographer or whether you're someone that just loves shooting film or taking iPhone photos, what is it about taking photos that we love so much? Is it attention? Is it connection? Is it surely the visual component of it? Why are photographs now more than ever so important in the world? To me, I think photographs are so important because they signify that something, an event, a feeling, a moment, actually existed in the first place. So, be that a birthday celebration, be that a meal, be that traveling with a friend. Photography is so important to me and us as a species because it is a mark of our history. It's a mark that we were here and that we existed in the first place. In the digital age, we tend to take photographs very loosely, right? iPhone photos are taken everywhere at every event and typically we post them on social media sites to connect or perhaps get attention or draw awareness of something. But photography itself goes so much farther back than just the digital age, and we'll jump into that now. But initially, photography began as something of a utilitarian function. It was meant to surely document things from a historical perspective, and now it's so much more. But from the early 1800s when photography began, all the way to now in 2024, there's an ethos that ties all these elements together, which is existence. Photography is proof that something happened in the first place. So from a photography perspective, not that you're Kobe Bryant or Kanye West, what is your mark from a photo perspective? Do people think of you when they think of black and white photos? Do they see certain images of places and spaces and think of you? Do they see certain musicians and associate that with you? Do they see certain fashion or certain brands or read certain books and think of you? So let's go into the supposed first photograph in human history, which is this black and white, very grainy pixelated photo here. Now, it was taken in 1826, so no Nikon, no 50 millimeter lens, simply just an exposure on film at the time. Taken by Joseph Nikifore Nipeche, which I've probably butchered at his name, but that's fine. Now, what is this photo of? You probably don't know, and I didn't either when I looked at it. But does it actually matter what the photo is of? The more important context here is that this was the first photograph documented in human history, right? It's a literal mark of existence to say this camera was here. I, Joseph, was here. So in a weird sense, the context of the photo itself is more important than what the photo is of. Now, it is of a view in France outside of a windowsill looking at two buildings on either side, but that becomes irrelevant when you think of the fact that this is the first photo ever to exist. One of my favorite photos of all time is of Dali, a very popular, if not the most popular artist of our generation. But hilariously enough, not photoshopped. Not photoshopped at all. You see, <laughs> Felipe actually, the photographer, threw cats in the air and threw water and threw chairs just to get this image. And they did it 26 times, which is hilarious. Most people would think this is photoshopped. Most people who recreated this now would use Photoshop to achieve this, Felipe didn't. It took his wife, his daughter, and him 26 times just to achieve the image that they wanted. Now, if that doesn't sum up the importance of photography, I don't know what does, right? Cats also have nine lives, so it's fine. They were totally, no animals were harmed in the making of this. But the image itself says so much about who Dali is, being eclectic, eccentric, out there as an artist, and it's worth so much to get the right image at the right time of the right thing. So for you, watching this as a person, maybe it's a concert that you've been to, maybe it's a family portrait, maybe it's a portrait of a brand or a piece of clothing that you absolutely love that was handed down to you. The reason it's important to take these photos is to not only convey images and ideas of who you are, but leave a mark in terms of who you were. One of the more famous photos of all time, which I'm sure you're well familiar with, is a photo of an Afghan woman shot by Steve McCurry for a National Geographic's cover. One of the most famous photos and one of the most striking photos ever taken. But this image says something about how important it is to document photography and our ongoings from a historical perspective. So we've talked about images from a more bright perspective in terms of displaying elements of who we are and what we stand for. But photography is also important because it can document refugees, workers, folks and individuals and peoples that are going through incredibly difficult times. I mean, 
there's no share of images that are enough from 9-11. There's no share of images that are enough from the current conflict uh, in Gaza. These images are so important because they show what people are going through. They show how we can help and how we can support each other. And they reveal things about our humanity or sometimes lack thereof. Documenting photos is so important from a historical perspective. And also to reveal things about who we are and who we want to be. So these are some of the portraits that I've had the pleasure of shooting over time, both in studio and on field. And most people might just see faces, smiling faces, typical portraits. But for me, I see micro expressions. I see people who are going through incredible things, people who are going through sad times, people who are going through all sorts of emotions and feelings that are displayed through the micro expressions that they have. And the beautiful thing about any portrait, in my mind, is that when taken, you can never, ever, ever recreate that exact same moment again. So whether you're shooting on an iPhone, or you're shooting on a DSLR, Hasselblad, whatever it may be, it is so important to take portraits and pictures of each other because you will never exist in that same frame again, ever. So, I wouldn't worry too, too much about quality or getting something that's even close to this or beyond because it's just important to document our ongoings and our day to days so we can look at them and reflect and show others and connect over it. Ultimately, the ethos of this entire talk is connection with the past, with the present, and with our future. Now, aside from portraits, I love shooting street photography. And I love taking black and white street photography that shows so much more than just the words. So with this, in case of emergency, break glass with an ice cream scoop. Now, I don't know if you're lactose intolerant or if you love ice cream yourself. I certainly do. Ben and Jerry's is fantastic. But the images that we have can tell us so much more than the paragraphs that we put out. And the beautiful thing about photography and about images themselves is that they're interpreted differently by different people who have different biases, right? For someone who sees this who's going through a tougher time, maybe they think of their mental health in terms of emergency. For someone who's an ice cream lover like myself, maybe they just think of a bright, happy memory in terms of warm summer days eating their favorite pint of vanilla bean. But the beautiful thing is that photographs, aside from utilitarian function, can serve as pieces of artwork that are interpreted differently by different people. Even this image of light leaking past a building forming an eye symbol. Now I see an eye, but maybe you see a person, maybe you see a head, maybe you see a body, maybe you turn this image upside down and see an exclamation mark, it's up for your interpretation. But images can provoke thinking, and thinking can create action, and action can hopefully create a better world. So through the right images, we can not only encourage people to reflect and think on memories and history, and perhaps document struggle and strife, but also promote thinking and ideation that leads to the change that we need to see for a better environment around us. Speaking of human history, we just went through a pandemic, which I'm sure you're well aware of. And in that time, photography was more important than ever, not only to document where we were and what was happening at the time, but to make sure we never get there again, to make sure that we are safe and keep each other safe through our travels and through our ongoings. And it documented struggle. It documented connection or lack thereof. It documented how different things were. 10, 20, 30 years from now, when we're speaking to our kids or other generations about this pandemic that happened, images and words and marks are how we will tell those stories and hopefully lead to a better future after that. My mother was my best friend, one of them at least, and maybe the only person that will know me that well. And she passed away last year. Now, if you've had anyone that you've lost or anyone that you're connected to that is no longer here, I don't even need to tell you this, but images are a way of keeping their spirit and their energy alive. Images are now the only way that we can truly connect with them and show them to others and reflect on what's happening and who they were, all the good and all the bad and everything that made up who they were to you. That could be friends of yours, that could be grandparents, that could be parents, that could be colleagues. All we truly have are the moments that we share with each other. And documenting those through photography is such a beautiful and heartbreaking thing, but a necessary thing. And for those of us who aren't here anymore, taking portraits, taking pictures, celebrating events, and really documenting things, whether through an iPhone or through a DSLR, is so, so important because we do not know when our existence 
will cease. None of us truly do. So however you do it, make your mark in this world, whether it's through what you say, what you do, who you are, even just being a kind and genuine human being, that is a mark of existence. It doesn't have to be a logo, it doesn't have to be a ton of images, but feel free to document, feel free to share, feel free to plant your flag, state your motto, however you do, and make your mark in this world. Now, I'm saying words, we all typically do, but there's power in what we say and what we write. So just do it, for example, being one of the most famous phrases of all time, which we've just talked about. Or even, I think, therefore I am, another phrase. What we communicate, how we say it, everything from tone, intonation, to the slant of our writing, to the nature of our writing, to whether it's written down in a Google document or on paper, says so much about who we are. So if you're not particular fond or have an inkling towards the visual world, as a photographer, as a designer, you have words, spoken and written, that can convey things about who you are and your existence. Now, we can go over some of the most famous speeches of all time, Barack Obama, Martin Luther King Jr., Winston Churchill. So many speeches have been documented because there are power in words, and they're replayed again and again and again over time to remind us of who we are, who we can be, and where we were. Now, I've shown images of my mother, Kobe Bryant, Kanye West. These folks all have words associated with them that speak volumes about who they are. So another famous phrase, you only have two lives, and the second begins when you realize that you only have one. That itself sums up the gravity of existence and how important it is to document what we are doing and who we are in this current moment, because there truly only is one life, as cliche as it may sound. A lot of people feel pressure of not being a great photographer or maybe not being the best public speaker or maybe not being the best writer, but you don't have to be the best. You don't even have to be a designer to leave your mark of existence in some way, shape, or form. Write, sketch, dance, record, experience, connect with each other, and it will be a benefit to yourself and to others. So, what is your mark moving forward? Is it visual? Is it written? Is it spoken? Is it through fashion? Is it through your conversations? All I encourage you to do after this is reflect and think and try and document moving forward, however that looks for you. So simply put, whether it's your childhood self, your current self, who you want to be as a person or a brand, an image means that you exist. Uh, that was about it. Great. Is there an outro of sorts that you... <laughs> <laughs>